Okay, we're in a secret research installation doing the final test of the Bob Boyce cell. And here we've got Brian Bayliss, who's done a tremendous amount of work investigating the Bob Boyce circuitry and technology to see what actually works and what doesn't work. Now, we've uh, hooked up the circuit to the Variac at the 150 volts, as instructed by Bob. We've just oh, got a zap there, which... Uh, that was because I put the crow on. Put the crow on. What are we blowing up? Anything exciting? Nothing? Yeah. I, I guess that was going to happen, that's what I was waiting for. Oh, tune, you won't, which are the uh, 21 and 42 and, and 10 kilohertz roughly, isn't it? Yeah, and the cell is doing very little um, output, exactly as it was on the 150. And here you can... Now, on, on the 150 volts um, straight DC, this is the amount of gas we're getting out, which is what you might call a QS, and we've got 100 plates, so it's only 1.5 volts across each plate. So and that's there. exactly the same with the pulses on. And then when we applied the pulses, which are, what, about 30 volts peak to peak, uh, on top of the 150 volts, uh, there is absolutely no observable change in the amount of gas. So the phenomena that Bob is talking about... Um, uh, to produce mega amounts of gas uh, with this frequency generator is certainly not happening. You got an explanation for that, Brian? No, I reckon it's a, a fair comment that it don't work. As in the design is simply not a viable design. And if you, if we can, I don't know whether we've got enough here to get the actual... Can you show us the waveforms on the uh, actual... Uh... Uh, that's on the 2021. 20, so there's the pulses going in. Uh, whether you can see them or not, I don't know. Yes, we can see them. Um, so these, it's happening. And I'll just uh, show you that. Now that's happening as according to Bob. Bob's saying, exactly uh, so. The, the and what I'm doing here now is I've gone onto the other one, onto the other cell, onto the other output. Stretch them out a little and stabilise them. That's the high one, which won't. won't this yeah. should be the low so one. So it's about the 40. That was a 40, and you won't get very much out of that because it's. Um, yeah. There's problems with that. Right. Um, and that's a 10 point. Uh, 10 point. Um, right. So the frequency generator is working fine, but the problem is heterodyning these frequencies into the toroidal coil and getting the effect that Bob talks about. Of course, he talks about free energy, longitudinal waves and all these sorts of things, but as far as we know, we're not, not getting anything of a That's sort. The, the, oh, we finally got it The uh, yeah, You can see that the uh, 48, it's there, but um, it's certainly Pretty not Pretty messy, working. isn't it? That's yeah. the 48, yeah. yeah. It's not real flash. Um, and that's a design problem. The uh, uh, problem is there is um, when, when you see the curve going up, uh, that is the... Uh, the um, I'll, I'll go on to the other one to show it a bit clearer. When you see this, the curve going up, this curve is the, the uh, RC content, uh, RL con, uh, time constant of the coil uh, and the resistance of the coil. And when it gets to there, it then re drops down. On the 48, uh, you can't get this. It doesn't even reach. Um, it doesn't even reach uh, the uh, time constant value before it crashes. It hardly gets there. In some cases, it crashes. Yeah. And let's just see what. Um, we'll just see what voltage we've got there, going in. Times 10. That's 60. A uh, circuit apparently that he used, the power supply, he broke down it into a number of harmonics and uh, the harmonic frequencies he fed into the cell and that was a 61 plate cell so um, it's nothing like the 100 plate cell and he may have got something but I doubt it very much. Now the only thing that I can think of at 120 degrees in the power industry, three phases will actually make a phenomenon with a third harmonic if, um, if some of them, some of the phases are getting different um, capacitance or inductives to bring all three lined up. And it's happened in the power industry. 
and it could well have happened with his alternator uh, if he was using an alternator and we had a bit of unbalanced uh, in each of the circuits and we get a three phase um, shifts which put all the currents at, uh, at the one uh, level which would give a exceedingly above over 87 times or more the uh, current and voltage that's going in still uses up all the energy that's going in it still equals that but it puts it all in the one spot now this is the only thing that um, he may have stumbled on I don't believe it's scalar or longitudinal because we can't see it here today well I understand you need about 500 litres a minute of gas to actually run an engine successfully, a larger car engine, which is an awful lot of gas. But um, so it would seem to be a fairly impossible feat for this to produce that under any circumstances, wouldn't it? Yep. Um, even his 100 litres a minute on brute force uh, looks a bit hard to get. Um, but I suppose if we were to wind it up to um, uh, over 2 volts a cell, we might be able to get it. Well, we've had up to 12 litres a minute, uh, cranking it right up to around the 10 amps, and that, at that stage it cooks very, very quickly, so it's certainly not a viable proposition, um, the cell being in the present format. You can show it on there now. The, uh, uh, the output there is showing the, uh, the, the, the 48.2 um, pulses going into the, uh, into the toroid, so we know very well the pulses are going in um, to the toroid. We managed to get... Uh, that actually going, but not very well. The other, the other frequencies are, are there, uh, are, and they are. Um, that is a 21, which you can see is is a lot better, and um, that is a 10.7. So all three are going into the coil, and the Troids is uh, done exactly as he's uh, as he's laid out. Okay, well, what's the, what's the final conclusion that we can come to on this uh, very expensive experiment that we've embarked upon? Final, final, final thing is, it doesn't work, Bob. And anybody else who uh, is contemplating on um, uh, building one of these cells, quick question, don't do it. You're wasting your time and you're wasting your money and frustration. All I'm asking is that, uh, if Bob ever watches this, Please put all your figures and your data, plus all your how you set it up, and all your current values and your data on YouTube, or even on your own website. Uh, so that not only us can see it, but all, all your other so-called thousands of followers can watch it too. And so it would put the, uh, the whole caboodle to rest if you could actually prove it to us. No one else has done it yet, and quite a few others have actually tried, and the South African people have also tried, even with your hex controller have tried, even the second time he still had no luck. You can look at that website if you like on, um, uh, and look for yourself. Uh, that's all I've got to say. Um, it's a load of crap if you want it in ordinary words in Australian language. Um, I am no longer going to do much more to this cell um, until somebody like Bob Boyce or somebody else uh, actually shows us and proves us uh, that it can work. I will be continuing on a new line which will be uh, harmonic frequencies and power pulsing on uh, another style of circuit which I think has got much better chance. Well there's the challenge folks. If somebody has information to the contrary and can prove that this cell will actually perform with the resonant circuits uh, or the pulse circuits rather, the frequencies being applied, then the challenge is out there. So we await for further information from Bob or anyone else that can prove otherwise. Uh, we've been on this now for a year or so, we've done all that we can do and Brian has done a tremendous amount of research and as he says there doesn't seem to be anyone out there that has replicated this and so we can only leave it for the time being until we get other information to the contrary. Thank you.